Great. Let's get started. Currently there's only one game mode, which is solitaire or, sorry, there's only two types, solitaire or local or multiplayer. My tea tastes like so. That's the only thing that's going to be tutorial specific in the start game, I think. Game starts and it crashes. Let's just run that again. Oh no. It's lunchtime and my tummy is rumbling. Let's take a break. Right, where was I before the unit crashed? Let's see. Let's have a look. Instead. <coughs> This state hasn't been implemented. One, two, seven, player state controller tutorial. And what state is that? Start turn, was it? Yeah. Okay, I'll pop that in as well. Let's give us some of that access. Player state mode. Okay, so start turn. I will pop an extra dead as well because that will also be the next thing that. There's that. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Cool. Um, at this point, this is where we want to start putting in. You can only play certain cards. So the carousel, the current carousel state doesn't actually want to be showing, so we will want to override that and have a tutorial carousel state, because that currently shows the entire carousel. But I've set up the carousel in the way I am able to say, just show this card and the rest is all disabled, thus forcing the player to play a certain card. That's the plan. Um, I wonder actually if I just overwrite, oh, sorry, if I just inherit from the carousel because it's going to be essentially exactly the same. It's just going to be this line that will be different. Okay, let's just duplicate it and then I can start removing things that we don't need just to see, just to clean it up a bit. Okay, no, sorry, that, that is the correct line there. It's when I fill the carousel, which is here. Carousel, play a skirt. Let's just inherit from it. So I want to use a different carousel, actually, because the carousel that's being used is the carousel that's located in player hand. So let's just have a look at player hand. It displays all the cards at the correct time. We want to change it so there is a, um, let's have an example, start, game, player state. See, so this uses a carousel setup that, um, like I said previously, um, only allows you to select certain cards. No, okay, I'm not going to inherit from it. Because that's set up in a good way. And I don't want to have to change things to match just so it works in the tutorial. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I'd rather write it from scratch and make sure that everything is correct. I'm not messing up, I'm not changing anything. It does just mean I'll have to duplicate certain things. Yeah. But I will copy up to this class, which does also have a set of quite how I want it to be. So for example, copy all of that. Um, let's change that. That's just so I know when I'm looking at the carousel in the hierarchy that I can that I know which carousel I instantiated where it's come from. The majority of this. I wish I could split that so it was like half the screen. Maybe. 
Okay, then the PRT is sucked up. And then again, I'll go back in and just fix it. Fix the things that are wrong. Okay, so this, this is where I'm sorting out the dead. Um, let's change that to valid and invalid card. I think I will pass through here as well the card that I'm only going to allow you to play. So that was tutorial data. Um, Oh, I call it tutorial data and tutorial action. Okay, there it is. So let's store that as well, because that's something passed in locally in the carousel. So I'll store it to make sure we can access it later. Like so. So, okay, yeah, so this is where. Um, in the start game, I've just copied it off, and that's where it's sorting out whether the card is original, whether it's dead or, um, or not. But we want to know whether it's valid or invalid. So instead, here, um, let me just get rid of that. We want to sort it if card data type, get base type is equal to tutorial action card data card type. Because this survivors, vehicles, plans, resource types. I want to compare I pass in there card data. Let's say card data. Oops, card. Which card? Card data is this, yes? Yeah, we get base type. We get base type. That's all we should care about. Um, this card same type because we're not checking ID. And that doesn't matter here. Okay. So instead here we could say uh, tutorial action .m card data is the same card type as hand list and index card index. Um, and we're passing the data. So if that's true, we will insert the card to the valid list. If not, we will insert it to the both valid and the invalid. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think we're always going to assume that there's always going to be cards in the place handed tutorial, so we won't bother testing that. A carousel organized, we're going to pass it a valid card list and then the invalid, which we've just created, and we'll display it, which is essentially this. We'll display the current UI as well, and that should be defaulted on, but I'll just put it on there anywhere. You're always going to be the player, the current player. That. Attach the carousel to the hand. Uh, that's already done so we don't have to worry about that. We'll trigger those two events 
uh, display the UI. I'll say no to that because we don't have any trading in. Uh, there's going to be no uh, the mouse controls are on. We do want that. Okay, then this is morning because I don't have a switch to city view, which shouldn't be allowed at this point in time. So I'm just going to comment that out because it isn't until turn two that we go to the sea deck. That would be being forced. Okay. Update carousel. If the current card is selected, or well, the select button is pressed, which is the same as here, yet yeah, we say play card and update the carousel, update the view card. This is always going to play current player. So that. Um, again, I'm going to comment all of that out for the time being. So we're ignoring that and then I'll pop in that finish function. So that just finishes the state and tidies up things which again we don't need that because we didn't turn it on. Uh, the carousel we need to delete though because that is handled differently because I instantiated it. Let's replace that with that. Okay, let's give that a try. So now in theory So in theory, if everything has worked correctly, I should be able to only select the cycle in my hand. No, what am I talking about? I haven't even called that function, that class state yet. Ugh, that won't work. Okay, so player state tutorial, that's the one. Give it a little whack. So carousel now, here, in player state tutorial, you actually want that to go to tutorial. And the uh, tutor oh, tutorial actions wants to be the current round. So it's game controller global round. Where do I do that? There it is. Uh, round count. And we'll get the first one. Because like I said earlier, because it's a list, I will remove them once we're done with them. Rather than use the dictionary. Nope, that didn't work. Pass that in first, didn't I? Not. Last, here we go. There we go, and it says only the cycle is allowed. So I select the cycle. I would have thought it would have crashed at that point. I guess not. Uh, let's go back to carousel. Let's just check it's been updated. So I might forgot to I think I forgot to call the update function <laughs> somewhere. Uh okay. Oh. Yes, yes, the input manager. The input manager keeps breaking. If you change the making code, it's like no. It breaks all the time. Is update being called or not? It does not. Wait, did I leave the breakpoint in? I didn't. Hang on. Good. Tutorial update carousel. So it thinks it's still an update camera. Yeah, <laughs> update camera. Probably what I did. There we go. 
Hopefully. There we go. Okay. <laughs> right. So I'm going to do the same again where I copied over Caris Carousel Tutorial, uh, created the Carousel Tutorial stair. I want to do the same for now, play a card. And again, pass in the same player card, um, the tutorial action, and say, right, this is where it has to go. Change that to tutorial. And then I'm going to pass in tutorial data again. We will cache it. Again, here, do I want to overwrite um, function if I inherit from the base class? Because there's probably very uh, little else different from this class again. Inherit. Let's change this to protected. So I'm going to change this to only allow me to select certain slots. So if I change that to specific. This um, ba player base select controller is the thing like when the controller it highlights what you have currently selected specific to the player base. So currently when I just use the bog standard um, constructor, the player base select, um, that uh, will be in select uh, sorry, here. Depending on what card it is, what bit, whereabouts in the base it's allowed to be placed. But I don't want that. I want to be using this constructor. No, but I'm not passing something in, so I don't want to use that constructor. I want to pass in, okay, not specific, let's just get rid of that. We don't need to change that, we need to create a new constructor, which is going to be similar to this. I'm just going to copy and paste it again. Just get rid of that. So now I change my carousel, the player, to tutorial action dot position. Let's just start as well, just in case. Probably don't need it now. So yes, I am instantiating the selector twice. I suppose I could destroy it and then instantiate again just to make sure there's nothing floating about in memory. Okay, um, so that was back in play state tutorial. <laughs> Player state controller tutorial. There we go. Play card. Copy that. Put that here, because that's the next state. That's the state we're going into. But we don't want to go into the play card. Player state, we want to the tutorial state. And then we pass in. The same thing that we passed in previously. Okay, do I have any errors? So, can I play the psycho? And if so, can I play it only inside? The answer is yes. Cross it breaks after that, so I haven't done the action step, which should be a straight copy again. Pretty sure I don't need to do anything because inside there, I'm 
you should be allowed to do whatever you want. You have to do from my tutorial list. I think that's correct, and if not, I can go back and fix it later. Oops, I have to Okay, let's try that. I think I'll probably want to implement finished action, which is the state that once the action is finished executing, it returns. And that's where I also uh, remove an action and at that point I can also remove the first in the list of the course in the tutorial. So yeah, finished action. Which is here. And we return to the carousel step. Before that though, we will also remove, we will essentially pop off the first in that list. So it's essentially it's a queue system. I'm just using a list and not a queue. Select the dead card. Yeah. Um, and then the next can only be the hero. But I can only play him outside. Where'd he go? Where'd you go, hero? Wait, I played the plan, not the hero. So why I'm saying hero? So why is it placing? That's probably in the play card state, actually, is it? When I play a card... Or is it the carousel state, do you reckon? Let's just put a break point here, just to see what card is coming through. Okay, so then we've selected the hero. Yes, it's selecting the wrong thing. Yes, I copied that straight from the car original carousel class, and I think I want to be copying it from selected card index from the start game, which is where it used this same system of carousel. This is random, random carousel current index. Okay, we'll copy that. Uh, so it's so a carousel tutorial we want to change, and it's not, okay, so yeah, carousel current index, but it's actually the valid card list we want to be passing through, because the indexes are all mismatched, oh, am I not passing through the card cache? Well, there's a point, is that wrong as well then? I think I set up my carousel row. Okay. Uh, so when I pass that back through, I'll be passing in my card cache, but that saves the game objects. Oh, I think I have a. If I change that to card cache. Card cache. Yeah, I'm doing the get card object, but this is card cache. So when I set that to carousel. I believe I have a get object. Yeah. So that is just an extension class I made for the card cache type. Um, so it just goes through the card list and returns just the objects. I use that a fair bit. So I have all these different types floating about. Cycle inside, we kill whomever. Hero. There we go. And then argument of range comes from one, two, two. I 
because there's no more in that list yet. Uh, we'll check for enter and won't come yet. Uh, okay, so that is all correct. And I've got a feeling when I come to do the next turns, for example, So then we have, for example, resource, resource type. Food, and that has to be blurred into the stock, stock pile. So this is what I need to figure out because there's two actions one in each round that are not playing a card it is taking a card from the city deck and picking a uh, survivor up okay i'm going to do something similar to how i do the step data let's create an enum uh, Call that action type. So we're going to say a tutorial type is either a play card or it could be a take city deck or it could be a pop card. And in that way, when I pass the tutorial data action in, I could be like, oh, it's this one. Okay, so do this, etc. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So if I go back to the player card, oh not that one, um, tutorial. So here now, oh, that also wants to be, for example, action oh, tutorial data action type player card. That's also going to be a player card. Player card. Player card. Well, this one is going to be put that in the wrong place. Take C deck card, which wants to be a scout. don't care about passing in them uh, base position and then again this one we want to pick up the hero so let's pick up card and we want to say hero So now I just need to put in, so we've done play card, that's essentially dead easy, it's so taking a city deck. So it automatically goes into the carousel, just, uh, just close it down to start with. So when it comes into the carousel, previously in the, in the original carousel, I do a thing where I say, oh, if there's nothing in the hand, go straight to the player base. So what I can do here is, right, when I get into the carousel, if my tutorial action data suggests that I have to go into the city deck, I automatically move into the city deck. That sounds... That sounds cool. So we'll still update the camera. But then here... We'll check the action type. You know, I, I haven't changed the moment to be into private yet. Maybe I should do that. Okay, so there we go. So there's some nice little getters to prioritize that data. So that will cause a bunch of errors like that. Tell you what, I should put 
to make this into a switch. So for example, I'm um, sorry, to turn the data. So if it's play a card, that's where we want to be. We're in the right place for that because we're in the carousel where you play cards from. However, if we want to pick up a card, that's where we'll have to go into the play base, which I haven't done yet, so we'll leave that. And then if we want to pick up a sorry, pick a card from a city deck, this is where we'll go to the city deck. Pretty sure this will need some fine tuning. But if I just block out the logic first, it's easy to go back in and change these things. Okay, we're not having a table view. We're not having a trade view. Maybe we won't, but it might, but I can add those in later easier. So switch to Where I changed all that data previously, get card data. I just need to go through and put the uh, properties in the getters in. Okay, so cycle, play her inside. Oh, that's the, I haven't done the city deck state. So again, that's back in the play state controller. Um, local, we'll just pinch again the city deck. I probably will want to overwrite that again and have a tutorial version. So I think I will use a city based tutorial and pass in. So the same as how I passed in the tutorial data here, I'll pass that into the city deck. And if the current state isn't to take a card from the city deck, I won't allow you to get a city deck when you click on a card. I'll be like, no, mate, you can't do that because of what I passed in. So I don't need to say anything in the carousel step that will be handled outside. That sounds like a cool plan. Okay, that took me straight to there, so that's good. And then the take city deck card, that is what I want to pop my stuff into. Okay. Actually, this is a good time for a coffee break. BRB. A few moments later. Right, I'm back. I have coffee and I have Smarties. So now um, I'm doing taking a card from the C deck. Um, yep, yeah, I do have another state for that. Pop that there. Get some Smarties. Okay, this is probably, so city deck and take city deck card states, I think I'm going to have to overwrite make tutorial version problem. Let's start with this one. Because that's where I'm actually going to be returning the card. And that's where I'm going to hack into it and be all like, it's not that card you thought, it's this card you thought. So it's this, this is the thing that gets the top card from the city deck. And that's the thing that I want to be like, no, not that card, this card. So again, same as the carousel, I'm going to pass in a tutorial action. We will cache it as well. It is quite a long, a long class that again I don't want to change too much. It's like for example the start view card, that is all exactly the same. That's not going to be any different. I could probably modify the base class just a little bit and get away with it. I think that's what I'm going to do. 
And I think in start, let's just go to the first class. See, city deck ID. If I also cache there, hard cache, hard object, this I can put here. So I'll change that to hard object. So here, that actually wants to be. Oh, in fact, we want to get rid of that altogether. Ooh. Actually, to put that there as well. It's that's never actually um, triggered that error, which is good. But I keep it around just in case because you never know things might go horribly wrong. I'm going to change all this to card object. Card object. So now, all I need to do is override this function. Just get rid of all of this because we don't need that anymore. Oh, that wants to be protected as soon as I'm inheriting it. Let me get the city deck ID as well. So I'm going to take the card, this top card from the city deck, and I'm going to words thing delete it destroy it and replace it by instantiating a brand new card here and now yeah I think that might be it. I think I need to update. Oh, I think I need to update the state stuff. Let's pop in tutorial there. Also, this guy, which goes in to start, I believe. Too many commas. Unity. I guess, will that work? Will that work? Okay, we'll go this side, go. Should go there? This is really annoying me, why haven't I fixed this yet? <gasps> Look at the scout! Oh my god, it works! Hey! Here, we're gonna go outside, let's kill him. He's dead. I also... finished turn stuff. Not finished action, finished turn. State, update state. So I'll probably get be able to get up to round two, action three. Action three is a, <gasps> is a pick up um, a card which I haven't implemented yet. So I can probably play it to that point. Uh, probably you know get through to there. Probably nothing to do with that. That is probably to do with game controller to game controller tutorial being different to game controller local. I probably have something in there that when I finish turn. Uh, So finish turn increments the, I guess the previous round, increments it 
checks for end of game, um, which will be different on tutorial, but I don't need to worry about that yet. Uh, it's not the final round. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, it'll trigger next round, which I haven't implemented, and then I'll go into player turn. Probably do want to put that next round thing in because that pops up. Can be removed if not. And then next round we'll probably come back with going to play a turn. Let's see what happens. I did save that, didn't I? Yeah. Nothing worse than trying to test something specific in your game and realizing that you haven't actually saved it. Some great points in, like, oh no, why is my code not working? It's just because you haven't saved it. I keep trying to put the hero inside. Oh no, the hero's covered. Uh, but yeah, and that's correct. Food stockpile. I should only be able to put him there. Yeah. And then scout. I should only be able to put him outside. Wait, that's that's not a valid that's not a valid slot. I can't play this scout on top of the hero. But yeah, apparently I can. So that was the player select base. That ah, there. Player base select controller. Yeah, that one. Ah, there we go. Inside slot. Slot. Occupied. It's interesting. I'm just going to test something outside of the tutorial. Because that gives me the impression that I can just play something on top of something else, or that it's not highlighting correctly. Let me just quickly. In which case, that code's really wrong. Um, need someone with two survivors. Um, let's play the redneck outside. And then the sniper. Yeah, that should come up and hover a bread. It isn't. That code's wrong. I'll fix that while I'm here then. And so that should be auto set to false. Okay, no, so that's true. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to pass in there. If it's occupied, then it's not available. Bodyguard. Let's go through his action. Okay, then a hero. There we go. Better. Can't, can't select that one because there's a card there. Okay. Back to tutorial. So essentially, I want to be pinching that same code. Scout. Yep. He now cannot be placed on top of the he has to go somewhere else. Flip two cards. Those also need to be Interesting. The scout can put two cards. Uh, and I've only set the tutorial yet, so it can. So there's one card. But obviously, I want more than one. This. Oh wait. This is something else because that's an action. That's constricting an action. But well, that's okay, I'll come back to that. Because now I was gonna do the being forced to pick up a player, a survivor, inside your base. So that's the same thing. If I'm in the carousel tutorial, because that's the entry point for all this jazz. 
here, where it's checking the tutorial action, is where I want to be all switch to player base view. Um, and the same thing, I want to pass in. And so you can only pick up these things. I think I'll overwrite this one rather than inherit from it. Because we don't care about looking at the stockpile. It's irrelevant right now. Before I forget, <laughs> I'll go and put that into the player state controller tutorial straight away. So when I return a card, where does that get called? Because I want to say you can only return this card. The selector again is me saying you can only pick up this card. So it's essentially using the same constructor as this one. Unless I change that to be put down which is automatically true, otherwise it's not put down, it's pick up. Don't I don't want to do that. I mean I want to do something similar to this, but it is going to be a different it is going to be a different constructor. Yeah because it's going to be card info, not card cache. Right. My mistake, so we don't want to put down. That is actually going to be card data card info. Yeah. Because that's what's in the tutorial data. So I'm going to get rid of all this put down stuff because that's stupid. We don't need that. So we get the inside card list, Oops. and we will go through each one and see if it's data, it's info, matches what is in. So that's where I had that wonderful little function I just created. Uh, if card object dot is card same as card list card index, then What is that? Pop that there. What's that false for? Can cancel. Okay, yeah. And then we want to do the same thing for outside. So I need to you actually use that inside the player base. Yeah, so instead of here. Wait, this is this isn't the tutorial one. Steady. We want to pass in here. Tutorial action dot. I wasn't I wasn't editing not the tutorial one I was at. Uh, card. Am I passing the right thing there? Okay, let me just check. Okay, I don't think I was changing anything in there. Okay, psycho. Scout. He. Oh, I did it again. Uh, so we don't want to go in the player base yet. So that was in the carousel, wasn't it? That's because I uncommented this, which is attaches a collider and a pointer event. To the player base, and the player base it takes you to the player base. We don't want that. Okay, so I'll play the food. I'll play the scout outside. Yeah, I'll take these. He's cool. And then it crashes. What is it crashing on? The selector. This is the player base selector. So again, I've got something wrong. Four, two, one.
So I guess I did this card info thing wrong. Yeah, I don't think I'm actually instantiating. I'm not. I'm not instantiating the select object. My bad. Let's try that again. So we play scout outside. Currently we flip to dead, but that won't stay there forever. And then here I have to pick up. Well, I can't pick up anything else other than a hero, and it crashes. Oh, return card. Uh, return card should probably remain the same. I don't see why we'd need to change that because I've literally just put it back in the hand. So I don't think we need anything there. Just give it a quick check. I think that's literally just moving a card. And we're telling it what card. Yeah, so that should be fine. We'll have to put the ball back again. Okay, so now I pick up the hero, and that's fine, that kills the scout like it should. Don't know why it's not doing anything now though. Ah, uh, I think my base is technically overrun there. Because I actually, because I haven't sorted out picking up so many scout cards yet. So it's probably crashed on there. Freaking out. Okay, I think that is a good place to stop for this part. That is uh, so far so good. I'm pleased with today's progress. Plenty more to do. Until next time.